Okay, this is absolutely awesome. This is the most overkill Knight Rider effect that I've personally ever made. This does prove quite nicely that the UART receive is working. Hello and welcome back. Okay, so here is the transmit circuit we built. That's ticking away quite nicely. But there was uh, quite a lot of discussion in the comments of that video that uh, receive is going to be much more difficult. And that's what I'm going to attempt today. Need some more breadboard space. I've already cut this one. Okay, let's get the oscilloscope out and remind ourselves what we're trying to detect. Okay, here's our bit frame. We've got start bit, eight data bits, and a stop bit, which is the signal returning high. Now we've kind of grouped this all up into a 16-bit frame when we only actually need 10 bits, but that was just to make our life a little bit easier with the counter chip here. Now for a receive circuit, what we need to do is detect this edge, and then we need to count out the start bit, the eight data bits, and the stop bits. So rather than relying on 16 bits, we need to be able to count for 10. So let's start with another 193. Only this time I'm going to use the count down rather than the count up. So it's the count up I'm going to tie high. I'm going to take that master reset low. But I'm not going to hardwire the parallel load because we're going to use that. Instead, I want to use the trick where we load the number we want to count to, which is in this case 10 into the register and then we count down and when we hit zero we can use that as an action to do something because the borrow line is going to activate okay so input bit three in tie high that's going to have a value of eight input bit two that's going to have a value of four so we don't want that input bit zero has a value of one we don't want that and then input bit one a value of two so we'll take that so we'll take the counter from the divided by 16 clock Let's see what that gives us okay so this is still going to be going on every 16th because we've not got the parallel load happening so it's uh, whilst it's counting downwards it's still going to be counting to zero and then returning up to 15 so we need something to trigger the parallel load and more importantly we want something to detect that falling edge on the incoming signal Okay, so we've got the falling edge of the start bit, and then we've got our carry that's uh, completely unassociated with that. It's going to line up differently every time I hit the space bar. Right, so now let's uh, build a circuit that's going to be able to detect that initial falling edge. This is a 74LS00, so this is four NAND gates. Now my hope with this is to build a set reset latch because we want to enter into a state when we start byte and then drop out of it when we finish. Right, so we want to tie an output to an input each way to create the latch. I'm going to use two gates on the same side this time, just because I think think the control signals for this are all going to end up at the top, or most of them anyway. It'll make our wiring easier. Right, so this NAND gate made set reset latch is active low. So if we tie the data signal in, the moment it sees the start bit, it's going to set. So if I momentarily bring that input low and then return it to high, we should have reset the SR latch. Let's go and get a state from it. 
Right, so the yellow trace will be the state of our SR latch and the purple trace is our data. Which is suddenly not doing anything. Okay, that's weird. Seem to be tracking the data line. I was expecting it to latch down. Hang on, this power line isn't in the right place. Ah, that's what I was expecting. Okay, now this is looking pretty good because we've marked the start of the signal, but we need to mark the end of it. And that's where our counter here comes in. The parallel load line, all the time that that is low, it's going to be loading the data. So if we use the AVA output from the SR latch, then that should mean that this clock will run while the latch is low. You want the least significant bit there. So now we've got the clock starting up when the signal starts. Now hopefully that means that this carry will happen once we've clocked 10 bits. And then we can use that to come in here and reset the set reset latch. At least that's the theory. Now that is looking good. So if I put this back in to detect the state of the SR latch, go to either the active high or the active low version. That makes things a bit clearer. It's worth noting that the end doesn't always happen at the same place. And that's because there is a timing misalignment between the bits coming in and this counter chip here, which is dividing this clock by 16. So we need to work out a way around that. And that's what we're gonna do next. Taking our clock from this 193 is causing us a problem. And that's that signal does not align with the incoming data at all. So initially, I'm going to completely replicate what this chip is doing. And we'll take the clock input to this chip from over here. So if I pulled the master reset low, the circuit will do exactly the same as we've had before. We've just doubled up these components. But what we're going to do is instead clear this whenever this is in the reset state. I needed to use the active low version. So now we get next to no change on that line. Oh, this is looking good. Let's see what this clock looks like. So now every clock of that yellow trace is aligned with the center of a bit and it only happens when the uh, bit stream is active. Now that is looking good. Let's see if we can tidy these wires up a little bit before we go any further. Okay, that's pretty neat. I'm really pleased with this circuit so far. We've got a nice clean clock pulse for every bit in between the start and the stop bit. That happens right in the center because we reset the divider based on that initial start bit transition. So now we need to look at how we can get at the data. So let's have a look at a chip that can help us do that. Now the parallel to serial conversion we did with an LS165 and right next to it in the table is the LS164 which is a serial in parallel out shift register. That sounds like the right thing and it looks like it's designed to pretty much be the opposite of the 165. So once again we've got data lines but in this case is their output. 
two serial inputs, it's a bit odd, um, a clear and a clock. Okay, so if they're both high, the first bit becomes high or it becomes low. It looks like it's going to be a NAND gate. Oh, there you go. Yeah, we're going to pull one of those inputs high and ignore it. Clear line we can fix. Yeah, we just need to clock this eight times with the data. So least significant bit is going to come in first, go into QA, then ripple down and end up in QH. So we need to wire that up in reverse order again. OK, this one looks pretty straightforward. All right, let's give it a go. OK, so here we have 74LS164. So the aired serial input is slightly odd. Reminds me of the clock on the 165s. The clock line will need to come up to the clock input. I'm guessing we can just pull that clear input high. OK, now we want to be able to see what we've got. Output H was where the least significant bit was going to go. Aha, uh -huh. that looks promising, but it's not right. So that was an A, B, C, D. OK, this is shifted up by one, so that top LED is going to be the stop bit. So yes, we've made a mistake here. We're doing the reset here after 10 bits, and we actually want to do it after 9, because we're expecting the stop bit. So that's the start bit plus the eight data bits. So I need to change the parallel load inputs from 10 to 9. So we've got bit 1 selected down here. Bring that low, so that's subtracted 2. And then bit 0. If we bring that high, that will add the one back. That will make our cycle 9 bits rather than 10. uppercase A, lowercase A. And that exactly is the pattern we're seeing. Oh, that's great. This is working. We receive one character and we output it on the LEDs. Okay, outputting one character at a time. That's working quite nicely. But I want to try for something a little bit more interesting. OK, I have quickly knocked up a very simple piece of test code that writes data to the COM port. So basic initialization of COM4, which is where it's currently plugged in. Regular viewers of the channel might be able to guess what this pattern is going to be. OK, this is absolutely awesome. This is the most overkill Knight Rider effect that I've personally ever made. This does prove quite nicely that the UART receive is working. And we've done it in four chips, which is actually no more complex than the transmit. So everyone who is worried about that, comments please. Let's get the scope out of here. Okay, I think I can tidy some of this up a little bit more. OK, now I'm really pleased with the progress today. So we've got basic send and receive. Now in both cases, we can form a character or display the received byte, but we're lacking some of the extra logic we need to, uh, to interface this onwards. So really this needs to be coming from a register of some kind and this needs to be stored in a, a register. So we're going to need to add some latch chips. But that kind of logic I think can wait for the next video response to the first one was uh, was great so
thanks everyone for that. So it looks like I'll probably be uh, doing a good couple more videos in this mini series. But I hope you found this interesting. I was particularly pleased that the chip count and complexity of this uh, receive circuit was no more so than the sending circuit. We've got two of these NAND gates left and I think they're going to be handy in producing some signalling. But uh, this is great progress for today. Thanks a lot for watching. Goodbye.